If it ain't broke, don't six it as John Kennedy gets Celtic firing against Livingston, putting him with, in with a shout of the full-time job. Elsewhere, hearts are up, Helanda goes down and Aberdeen bore their way to three points. It's episode 17 of the False 90s podcast. With me this week, we've just got Marcus and Kyle. How are we doing tonight, guys? Yeah, doing alright, mate. Doing alright, how are you doing? Yeah. Fucking into a 12. Good. Um, I'm just my, might as well dive straight into it with Hibs v Rangers. You said we'd leave it to last, man. <laughs> well, let's think we're starting with it then. Okay, we'll, we'll start with Celtic 6, Livingston 0 then. Um, it was a dominant performance from Celtic. I think that's the only way to say it. It's just... Uh, yeah, let's just say I don't think we were expecting that in our predictions. Let's, no. Let's, yeah. um, James Forrest, David Turnbull, two from El Yanusi and Ryan Christie as well as an own goal. Um... Yeah, I think. I mean, I've seen. No, Livy just had an off day, to be honest. Yeah, I think Livy still have an off day. Um, oh, you know, and Turnbull were were brilliant. Um, I don't, um, I don't think Livingston's had an off day. I think they've been progressively dropping down in terms of form the past kind of month. Yeah, but they usually show even if they do have a dip, dip in form, they usually show like yeah, recently as well. They, they, they can they can compete against Celtic. They usually do have a good game against um, the old firm, but I think since the semi-final, they've not looked. They've not had the same intensity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. um, nah, I'll give it that. Completely. So I think, and on the flip side, as much as Celtic have been a meme this season, like they, they've still been, you know, yeah, good enough to be second. Very, they've still been very reasonable. I mean, they still have a, they still have a team that costs. Millions and you know, ridiculous amount more than ours or any other team in the league, so they're still expected to win these games. Yeah, the like most points ahead of ahead of Hibs in terms of second place. Yeah, but obviously yeah. they're miles <laughs> points behind Rangers, and that's what matters to them. But they've still had, you know, looking outside of of the title and the ten row and everything, they've had a you know a half decent season. Yeah, and they've only lost it's pretty much. Games. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like what was our issue with last season is what basically happened this season. Like they could play against us reasonably well. Not, there's not the results that matter against us. It's the results against like the teams such as Livingston, Hamilton, Kilmarnock that you need to pick up the three points. That was our issue last season. I think Celtic just experienced this, this season. And long may it continue. To be honest. <laughs> well I I think um I think I don't think the rebuilding job at Celtic in terms of the playing squad is as drastic. I mean, they're still a decent squad. They still if they manage to keep if they manage especially to keep El Yunusi. Yeah, if they managed to get El Yunusi permanently, which we talked about last week, and you know they will keep get a good in the starting eleven then hmm. they will get a good fee for Edward as well. So if they reinvest that money wisely I think they're more than. I mean, they have the, they have the bare bones of a squad. Don't get me wrong; they'll still have to make a few signings. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite as drastic in terms of building. Yeah, I don't know if you heard as well. The um, as well. I, I, think, I think I read up on this as well. There mm. could be a deal to make Laxalt permanent if Edward would go the other way. I mean, yeah, I, I've I not... saw that this morning. Um, yeah, but it did seem like well, obviously Laxalt isn't starting, so yeah. If they sign wise, I don't think that would be wise. I don't. I don't particularly think he's um, an outstanding player, to be honest. But uh, he did good against us. But I think that was the only game that I, I've really seen personally. Like, so play play he, good. He put a good us. ball in, and he's. I don't know. He, he's quick up and in the flank, but like he's kind of like not my kind of left back. I don't know. I, I, maybe not a bit. Yeah. Not physical enough. Um, yeah, he gets pushed up the ball far too easily. Yeah. He, he does. He wasn't even. He, in the, he, he was on the bench at the weekend. Didn't even come on. Um, yeah. I don't think he's made that many appearances recently. For a player that's coming from Serie A, you'd expect him to be head and shoulders above everyone else. And like, I mean, how old is he? He's still quite young, isn't he? Looks uh, young. He's twenty-eight. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He, oh my God, I tell you, he looks about what, fourteen. <laughs> Celtic, which is cornrows, anyone would look 14. <laughs> They'd be better sticking with Greg Taylor, though. I mean, he's actually one that has potential. Yeah, Greg Taylor's a good, um, good player. On the right, I don't know. 
I don't think John Joe Kenny set the world alight either. So well, he's, he's only on loan as well. So um... I mean, he's, 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 he's done nothing wrong, really. Yeah, it depends. Like, if Ayer leaves, then that's God. the whole defense destroyed. Pretty much. Uh, pretty much. If Ayer leaves, that's more of a problem. I would say Ayer's I, 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 I the backbone of of the team. I was going to say if if Ayer leaving is more of a problem for Celtic than if Edward leaves. Yeah. 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 Because they can. Mm. I mean, who? If you're a, I don't know. I was going to say if you're a Celtic fan. I mean, it would be good. It'd be good if we could ask Andy. But what kind of striker would you want that would guarantee you about twenty plus goals a season, like Edward? Yeah, because you can't really rely on. I think Griffiths is probably too old to be that striker now. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's also too. In, uh, he's, he's too inconsistent with his fitness as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, he's been dropping in and out of the team a lot. Yeah. He, he has like he has a few months out and then he has a game where he scores and he makes a big deal about it and is like, I'm back. And then he falls out of the team again for a few months. Mm. Um, I'm not fully, I'm not fully, uh, like, I don't know, convinced that he would do a job for us. <laughs> Even a lot of a lot of us do want him back just because of his connections with the club. But I mean, like, talking of hip strikers, would Kevin Nisbet be a good chat for Celtic? He would actually. Um, he he does a lot of the things that Edward does, and I'm not saying that they're you know Edward is obviously the the more expensive, the better player, but Nisbet does these wee like. So you see Edward linking up a lot. He's you know he's very good at the wee intricate link up play. He's not just a finisher; he's also a creator, and I think Nisbet kind of is similar for us in that he. I mean, you've seen it with his assist for Boyle against Queen of the South and. You know more times this season as well that he's um, been the creator. Um, so potentially that could work. Uh, although I wouldn't like us to see, you know, I wouldn't like to see us selling players to Celtic necessarily. But um, from a Celtic point of view, it would make sense, I guess. I think as well, uh, going back to to Ayo, is that Celtic have a ready-made replacement for him playing for Ross County on loan at the moment in uh, Hilda. Um Who? Um, player on loan for Celtic. I don't even know they had a player on loan at Ross County. I mean, I mean, would he would he go right into the starting eleven next season? I mean, well, Welsh. I to be fair, I think Welsh has been okay this season for a young player coming in and a probably the worst season to come in, you know, into as a young player. Yeah. But... I'm, I, I've not seen much of him to be fair. Obviously, I've seen the ones where he's been against us. He's nothing special, I would say, from what I've seen personally. He looks okay. He's not like um. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's a decent. He, I mean, he's not. Um, he's not disastrous like Shane Duffy. <laughs> so I mean, I don't think anyone can be as bad as him. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. I think I could play better than him at times. But I don't know. I think it's a tough one. Uh, it would be really interesting to see who they bring in, uh, because the signings do depend on that. Yeah, I mean, Kjeld has so... made he's made eight appearances, eight appearances for Ross County in the league this season. Yeah. He's been hailed as the next Van Dyke. Um... <laughs> I mean, if you're, I, I was going to say, I he's, only, he's only at the age of seventeen, so he might be, you know, it might be a bit too early to, oh, for him to come into the to a Celtic squad. And yeah, you can't, you can't really judge anyone in that age, really. Is he is he getting consistent game time up? And is, is, he's County? played eight games for for Swartz County this season. He wasn't in the squad this weekend. Um, if if Celtic are wanting a defence that's going to help them challenge for another title, they can't rely on a seven a seventeen year old who's played. Not enough. a chance. Not a chance. No matter how much potential he has, like if they want success starting next season again, then yeah. next gonna... season, next season is really a cru- another crucial season as well. When are goes straight in the Champions League group? Mm. Yeah, it's important, it's important season. Very important season. Important for us because we need to mm-hmm. all the. I mean, we'll talk about Hibs later, maybe. But all the chat from Hearts fans um, about us finishing third without any competition. We'll see how we do next season with them back up. Yeah, mm-hmm. as well so, as um, yeah. you know, those European places are going to be mm. tough to fight for as well. Aberdeen, Aber- Aberdeen will be up for it with a new manager. We'll be up for it definitely. Um, Hearts will, in their minds, be up for it. Um, because you know, it'll be interesting to see how how they do because obviously they're promoted as champions this mm. weekend. Um, from the championship and. It'll be interesting to see how they recruit, what they do in terms of their management staff. Is will they get rid of Nielsen, um, mm. as the fans have been calling for? 
if, uh, if you ask me at the moment, their squad doesn't even finish, or, or maybe would barely scrape top half. I mean, that's that's my uh, that's my thoughts on it. Really. I think they'll finish in the top six, but it'll be like it'll be sixth. Six. And yeah. to be honest, I'm not just saying this as like a better Hibs fan. Like a lot of Hearts fans genuinely agree with me that they're in a really bad, despite winning the championship, like. So there's been too many of these lackadaisical performances from their point I th- of view. I think as well as winning the championship for Hearts was um, it was, bare, bare it, was... The, it was a bare necessity for them. Yeah, um, I think although I think the problem is more with Nielsen. If they stick with Nielsen for next season, then you know they're going to be in for a rough ride because, and and this isn't me, you know, with my head's bias. I'm just going off what Hearts fans have said um, that I don't think they would be anywhere near top four. Maybe get a fifth or sixth. If I if I had to say now where I think they'd finish, if they have a decent window, they can maybe hope for six. But we'll see how. I mean, I could be proven wrong. I mean, we'll see how they do. But that's with Nielsen in charge, though. Yeah, all could change. Who, who they're going to bring in? Eddie Howe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but moving on to the one of the other games in the Championship group was um, Aberdeen one 0 win over St Johnston. Um, it was. Personal. A very, you know, it was an Aberdeen game, is what I'm saying. Yeah, here. it's an Aberdeen game. Yeah. Um, Stephen Glass didn't really um have have a hasn't had this effect of playing, you know, attacking, exciting Atlanta United football. Um, the one 0 win uh with Johnny Hayes getting the goal. The struggles seem to continue still for Flying Canberry. Um, still hasn't got on the score sheet for. Aberdeen hasn't mm. really performed very he's well. Like, he's only decent when he's getting plenty of service, and like that's this is a team that didn't score a goal in nine in nine games. I'm really surprised about Aberdeen not getting service because he's got like sort of McCrory in that midfield. You've got Ferguson, yeah. But again, again as well, it's probably it's probably teams are just going to force them out the wide because there's not much they have to offer on the wide the wide areas. When like like Canberry very rarely will just go and make his a, a chance for himself. Like funnily enough, it's um one of a goal he scored against Aberdeen. Like as a funnily enough, where he like basically has a run from like the left hand side of the pitch. But he's done a few goals, times when he was with us as well. He made a few chances yeah. himself. A lot of his goals come from like clever wee link up play, and then he just gets in a good position in the box and is is a really clinical finisher. To be Actually, he's professional. Yeah. yeah. Um. But no, like he's not consistent enough. I think we've seen that the second season with him, um, or well, actually, any time. Well, any time after we got him on a permanent, which is, he was way too inconsistent. Mm. Um, so yeah, just looking at his stats so far, and like throughout this season, not only just at uh, Aberdeen but at St Gallen as well, uh, where he's on loan from, he hasn't had many good performances at all. Yeah. Um, I can't count the amount of goals he's actually scored this season, and it's zero. Um, what a striker! What a striker! His, his career was done as soon as he went to Rangers. Like, I mean, he did okay for us. He did good at times, but yeah, he wasn't. He, he was never going to be like a, the next Morelos or whatever. Like, a good career move isn't like going on loan to a club that's a big rival of a club you're at, and then saying what he said in that interview, and then going back. It's like, of course, we were going to get rid of him. The thing is, we didn't... Like big rivals and... Okay, Marcus. Well, yeah. I'd say... <laughs> oh, man. You, you know what? I'm... We are big rivals. I mean... So it's a rival. It's just a big game, yeah. But It's a big game. Aye, not, not rivals. It's maybe more... I mean, um, for us, like the, the team behind Hearts that we think of is, is used, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's massive. Yeah. I so, No, but he... he he screwed his head screw through. And the sad truth is that we weren't even in a position where he was a loss. Like, getting rid of him because Deutsch was, like, already providing all the goals for us that season. He got 18, so... Mm. Uh, but no, going back, to Aberdeen, though, going back to Aberdeen, I think it was the worst time for them to pick up points when we dropped points as well, but they do play Celtic next. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... But if it's... I was an Aberdeen fan, though, I would be... Starting to hope, get my hopes up about third again. I think it it really could go down to wire. It could just go, you know, 
it's going to be really tight. It, it could just be one game that decides it. There's four uh, games left of the season uh, and four points separate the two teams. Um, oh, that's going to be... And you've and you still got to play Celtic as well, don't you, Marcus? So, Hibs have got to play Celtic, Livingston, St Johnston and Aberdeen. Oh, Livingston obviously. as well. Oh, that's going to be a tough one for you and as Aberdeen well. Aberdeen need to play both of the old firm teams, Hibs and Livy. Um, so they play mm. St Johnston at the moment. We, we do play Celtic last uh, day of the season, though. So that, and that would be a big game. I mean, you you expect because you 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 just played us. Mm. Aberdeen have still got to play us. Yeah, they still got to play Celtic as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They have to play both yeah, yeah I mean, teams. you you expect Hibs to finish comfortably. And if we if we win, I think all we need is is six points. I think if we yeah, win, yeah, yeah. the two home games against St Johnson and Livy, which is easier said than done because we don't actually um, this season. Uh, not even just the season, but in general, we don't have a good record against Livy and St Johnson at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like seven years actually since we last beat St Johnson at home, which really, wow. yeah, it's really our record at home is terrible against St Johnson. So we need to pick up the points there. Aberdeen need to drop points against Celtic, and uh, they need to drop points against you as well. And we can just uh, the, the game at Pataudry will be massive though. Wait, are you playing them at Pataudry? It's at Pataudry. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, yeah. if it's on any TV, I'll give them that watch. <laughs> yeah. But in, ter- um, although- in terms of the European spaces, it doesn't really matter who finishes third and who finishes fourth because both teams go straight into the second qualifying round for the Conference League. I don't get that. I really don't. Isn't the Conference League below Europa League? The Europa League, yes. yeah. But so no... what will happen, what happen to our Europa League spots? It's the only Europa League spot is for the Scottish Cup winners. That's just dumb. That is, that is really dumb. So, am I right in thinking if Rangers win the Scottish Cup, for example, or or Celtic win the Scottish Cup, how does it kind of do? Well, um, not gonna happen, mate. <laughs> I, know, I was gonna say, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Celtic are gonna go past you, but for example, if it was one of them, would be placed? Yeah, I think the places would drop down. So, yes, yeah. if not if... either of them are gonna win it, um, I'm but... I, like, I'm, I'm actually quite against that. To be honest, I think. What it should have been before, but then you got a Conference League place if you won the cup. That makes a lot more sense. It does actually. Although I think they. But this is the UEFA U- we're talking about here. To be honest, none of what they do makes sense. I think UEFA figure that Celtic and Rangers are more Champions League standard, and they figure that like the likes of Aberdeen and Hibs are more Conference standard. Is there trying to match this up with? So do we get our Europa League spot back if there's not two Champions League spots in the league? So the two, uh, two Champions League spots, yes, we would, I think. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, Europa League spot. That's stupid, isn't it? It's the most confusing <laughs> system. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what, if, what if like some random team, like, like uh, Falkirk win the cup? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm... Well, Falkirk go out anyway, but if Falkirk <laughs> win the cup, they get a Europa League spot, and yet Hibs yeah. and Aberdeen have play, like, played all season. That's and so, nah, that's, nah, I don't get, get that. Nah, I don't get spots. that at all. I really don't understand that at all. Then, if we win the cup, then Livingston potentially get a then, place. Or actually, yeah, no, then whoever finishes fifth will get the conference league spot. Actually, no, because their their paperwork or something's uh, screwed up, so it'll go to St Johnston. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Levy have a European license, do they? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sure if if, uh, if they had qualified for a tournament like like uh, say if Hibs win the cup or yeah. whatever, then it would be they probably. You know, apply for one and right, get it. Right, okay. All right. Yeah, none, don't get it. <laughs> cool. And we're going on to um, some of the games from Saturday. It was a 1 0 win for Dundee United at Hamilton. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. The Hamilton surge to escape relegation is not happening so far. It's not looking like they haven't kicked off yet for the relegation battle. They'll leave it to the last minute. <laughs> I know we spoke about this in the last pod, but I would take Wraith for Hamilton in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Honestly, like, Wraith Rovers is a bigger club than Hamilton. Wait, Rovers, do, do they play Astro? I'm sure they do, don't they? Uh, they do play Astro, but like the thing with Hamilton, it's not just that they're Astro, it's their stadium and their fan. Like, uh, uh, Wraith Rovers would bring a decent away following to. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they would. Um, likes of Edinburgh, they would bring quite a bit. I think we we, we played them in the cup. Yeah, we played them in the cup a couple of years ago. Uh, one four. They're now, a good I wee think. team at the time, so. Sorry. They can be a good wee team. I remember playing them when we were in the lower leagues. Yeah. But obviously that was 
first team, but they've nice. It's a decent enough stadium. Like they would, they would provide more to the top flight than Hamilton. Probably, as a, yeah. Probably. As a bigger fan base, as a bigger club, a club that's won a major honor. They've won the League Cup. Hamilton. But then, won. but then you lose in our derby. But I don't know if, if Lewis would be happy or not with that because <laughs> of the results recently against. It's From what I understand, they, they barely see Hamilton as a derby anyway. They're, they're big ones, Airdrie. 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 Who are even lower down the league system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hamilton, um, they had a few good chances in this game, just, you know, couldn't put anything away. And I think their kind of luck is beginning to turn of, in terms of escaping relegation. Is yeah. What I think is just that, whereas in the past, they'd have these chances and they'd go in and they'd escape relegation, but this time... Doesn't look like it's happening for them. Now I say that now they're going to win every game after the season. But how many points are they bottom by? Uh, so they're more, they're bottom on twenty seven, and then Killy are above them uh, in the playoff spot with twenty nine, and then oh, it's County, still tight. And then Wasp then... County on thirty. Um, but then oh. you got Killy did drop points. Yeah, they so... did. Well, the Killy played Wasp County, in fact. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tight. It's going to go down the wire probably. But Motherwell looks like they're safe now. Um, they're on 30. Yeah, points, oh, yeah. So Motherwell's safe. They're eight yeah, yeah. points clear uh, with four games left. Yeah. And we'll go on to that Motherwell game. In fact, uh, Devante Cole with the one, uh, the only goal of the game, um, putting Motherwell one, uh, with, giving them the one that went over St Mirren, in fact. Um, St Mirren, uh, they had a missed penalty through Jamie McGrath. They should have had another penalty. It looked like... Um, it was a handball from O'Donnell uh, earlier, just before this first penalty. Um, did anyone else see this one? I'm about to get it now, mate. Um, but no, Devante Cole's been doing well for them, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'll just need to get this up in a second. Uh, but yeah, Mother, I'll definitely say from Melgaces right now. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, it's, it's another great turnout by um, by the boys on here, eh? <laughs> can't talk about the stuff, can't talk about the Mother game. Hmm. Uh, yeah. when, when 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 did it happen, Sam? It was just before the first, uh, so the it was before the actual penalty was given, uh, around the twenty something minute, I think. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, it does look like a penalty. From he sticks his arm at his unnatural position, so yeah, it does it that for one? me. That that's a penalty. Yeah. It's strange how it's not given at all. Um, like. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, and maybe the ref didn't have a good view of it. Maybe he thought it came off somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, but the, it's the best it's quite quite poor really the, the penalty it was given was very obvious so yeah 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 yeah. that's a clear penalty as well that's, that's fair enough but it was a decent goal for Durante Cole he's uh, you know really lighting up lighting it up up here um, yeah he's doing well yeah he's doing pretty well he's only 25 as well so he's got quite a bit of his career ahead of him um, I mean I, I didn't really see much of him before obviously when he scored against us um, but I think from there he's he's he has um, definitely flourished. Like he's yeah, been he's, in the, the headlines quite a bit. He's bounced so. around the the English lower leagues quite a bit, um, on League One, League Two. But he hasn't mm. really kicked on. But I think he's, he's found his feet up here, um, and he's I don't know, he's he's, a, he's, a, he's an asset for for Motherwell. And I think 100%, yeah. if if they keep hold of him. Uh, and keep hold of uh, Alan Campbell as well, and and the rest of their uh, yeah. players. I think like, hold of Campbell. Uh, I even if they keep on hold of the the keeper Liam Kelly, um, who's been an impressive keeper. Uh, for he has them. been. It's just like I've I've always liked Liam. It's kind of going off of, off string a wee bit, but Liam Kelly at Rangers, he didn't really get much of a chance. But from what we've seen on those loan spells that he had, he he's a good keeper. And from what we've seen the now is. Something we let go of, I think, too easily. But again, we had a quite a big keeper situation. It was we had two really good keepers, and so we had to get rid of one. Unfortunately, it was Kelly. So, but he's definitely shining. Yeah, um, he's only on loan from QPR at the moment, and uh, yeah, I think yeah, Motherwell yeah. do want to make him make him permanent because he is he's been putting a few good performances. In there. They have him for the full of next season, uh, whole of next season, as well as Campbell and Cole. Um, I don't see how I don't see why Motherwell can't finish in, uh, or challenge for the top six. It's just mentality, mate. It's literally was because wasn't it the season before they finished third, wasn't it? Aye. Yes. Yeah, it's... They'll have a it's just mentality, mate. It literally is. I don't oh. know if it's something to do with the manager as well because uh, they did have a manager change. 
Um, I think uh, I Max Alexander has been a good appointment. Overall. Yeah, yeah. I think full, full season under him, I think Motherwell uh, should do quite well. Give him a, give him a summer window as well, and because they just that, need. I would probably say they just need a couple more, like a couple more players, and then just to uh, just to make gel better potentially. But then it could, could go wrong. But he just needs to definitely. Managers do need a couple of years to try and get just get their team. They'll need to overhaul the squad because a lot will leave in the summer. Um, yeah, 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 of course. Well, Campbell, Campbell, uh, there's no chance he's signing a new deal. Um, mm. So I don't know what the situation was with, with O'Donnell, but him as well. If he's not currently, yeah, himself, uh, he'll I mean, be away. He is apparently the best right back in Scotland. Uh, no, I disagree with that. I disagree with that, but. Yeah, it just it just shows, doesn't it? Really. Yeah. Um. But going to St. Mirren, um, they've bottled top six. They bottled top six, and now they've, you know, they've lost to Motherwell, who they've been you know, fighting for over, you know, sixth and seventh place. So. Yeah. It does. I don't know, I don't know what's happening, to be honest. Because yeah. they, they looked a really good team, obviously, when they put us at the cup, like a really really good team, like could have challenged for the top six. They had a, yeah. that was their wee surge of form they had. Yeah, and it was us when we just played Zungu to start. Mm. Just think Gerard's learnt now. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's happened to them. They just lost form, I guess. These these teams like they they have we but like Livingston, St. Johnson and, and St. Mary Avoid we like bursts of form throughout the season. Hmm. Like, they're not actually good enough squads to keep up consistently. No, no. Um. So I think I think we have seen that with uh, going back to Livingston is that. Yeah. They put on a really good run of form, and now they're paying the price for it. They've been some yeah, really good cut run as well. Yeah, um, so I think their morale has been, you know, cut off by their poor run of form and also losing the cup final. Um, so, it, yeah, uh, they have achieved top half though, which is very decent. Which is an achievement. Oh they yeah, finished top oh yeah. Half again, uh, last season as well, um, and there's a couple of seasons before. So that's what three top pass finishes in the past uh, few years, which is you know, not bad at all. When 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 did they come up? Um, it was eighteen nineteen. Was it? That's yeah. great. Come on, <laughs> doing well. Yeah, I, right. don't, I don't think they've actually been in a proper relegation battle since they've been up, which is you know commendable. Oh. That's yeah. very commendable. Yeah. Got to give some credit when it's due, but um. I don't know. I don't know what's happening in the club. To be honest, <clears throat> I think it's uh, potentially because when when that run that they went on it was it like ten, eleven games unbeaten, they went. Yeah. I think they got a bit hyped up about that. The fans hyped up a bit, but yeah, and then... again, you, you can't you can't really tell what's the factor of that. Right. And going to an actual relegation battle between Kilmarnock and Ross County. This one started like a house on fire. Uh, goal in the <laughs> third minute. Goal in the fifth minute. Goal in the sixteenth minute. Um. Mm. Proper relegation. Yeah, yeah, it was a, an exciting one. Burke put them one uh, put Kilmarnock one up after a minute after three minutes. Yeah. Uh, Garden equalised after five. Pinnock put uh, Kilmarnock get up again, two one, uh, and uh, there were some really good goals in this game. Yeah, really was, good. First one was an absolute belter. To be fair, and, uh, was it was it Burke that scored it? Burke, yeah, yeah, and then. Uh, but, yeah, well, uh, yeah. So yeah VT equalising on the fifty fourth minute um, from a corner as well. And it's another, you know, pretty good performance from Carl Lafferty uh, for uh, for Kilmarnock. Um, I think if they stay up this season, mm. it will be due to him and that signing due in January. Because Definitely. I think when it when it happened, we Definitely. did doubt it when he was coming in because we thought it would finish. But you know, I think Kilmarnock is about as did did did, did, did did he not join Kilmarnock when they were when they were bomb? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, sure he did. Yeah, yeah. he joined Fair like play just him. after um, Tommy White did on a free. Um, yeah, but now he's yeah. You know, but I think it'll you yeah, go on doing pretty well. Yeah, um... it'll be um, it'll be one of those two that are in the playoff space though, definitely. Motherwell, is Hamilton will be finishing bottom, unless uh, unless they pick up uh, a three points somewhere. But um, 
I don't know. It's a tough one. I can't really call it the now. Uh, currently, just a point above Kelly, but it'll be one of them too. And to be honest, if Rafe, if, if for example, I mean, it might be Dunfermline as well or Dundee, but I think if it's a team like Rafe and they play like what I've seen of them this season, then I'd fancy them to beat County. Uh, especially, I mean, we've seen it, uh, another champ- championship team in Vernes put a county in the cup. I mean, mm-hmm. the gap between the kind of top four of the championship and the bottom kind of four of the premiership isn't a whole lot. So, um, yeah, yeah. It, could be, it could be exciting to watch that. We have seen a few se- uh, um, past couple of seasons that the the lower division club has won the playoff uh, with Dundee United. Uh, last, oh, Dundee United, obviously. Dundee United. Yeah. They went up automatically, but um, that was uh, lost. No, the that was the one they they got the playoff against St Mirren and oh, they yeah, missed yeah, all sorry. the penalties in the shootout. But yeah, they took no. It was shootout. um, it was Livingston that came up via playoff, and that was like the first team that had come up by, by playoff in years or something. Yeah, I remember. It, yeah, sorry, we don't get it enough. It'd be nice to see. Um, it'd be nice to see another team come up with hearts. I've not been to Stocks Park as well, so a new ground for me to visit. Mm. So, Yeah, so it would be... Um, hopefully, Wraith do come up because we do want to see they're playing some good football in the Championship. Um, but now we'll go to the game that we did put off. Where did we hear? Oh, dear. You can start with this, Marcus. My thought in... All right. Yeah. Um, what I'll do is I'll run through the game from okay. a hip, from a hip's point of view. Okay. And then if you feel like you need to interject and add something. Okay. Sounds good, mate. Sounds good. <laughs> you can do it. All right. Um, I'll do a quick kind of overview. So, um, obviously Aberdeen winning the game before mm-hmm. meant that this was always like one where we were gonna have to come out and really push you. Like, ah. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, nah, I'm agreeing with you. I'm, I'm agreeing with oh, you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've not even you'll, started. You'll, you'll know if I've got an objection, Marcus. I'll be shouting. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get there. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we had nothing to lose. Like, if we lose the points, we lose the points. But even if it's a draw, like, a point at this stage of the season is a massive, um, it's still a massive result in finishing above Aberdeen, which is all we're trying to do at this stage. So I think the attack, uh, no, the, the lineup was very attacking and we were both in the, yeah. in the group when the yeah, lineups yeah. came uh, It was the same lineup that played against Queens and I was really surprised because I thought, well, surely against Queens that makes sense, but against a team like Rangers, you know, like maybe you're expecting uh, instead of a 3-5-2, maybe Maybe something a bit more defensive. I mean, I think the way that Ross set up was obviously Boyle playing that deeper role. We did talk about that. Yeah, so it did end up being uh, a then. So when, when it needed to be, it could be attacking. And yeah. then when it could be, it was defensive. Yeah, and to be fair, we have done that against you before this season. So I think, yeah, I mean, we always kind of thought, I mean, we knew what our game plan was. That's what I was sort of trying to say. We knew how we were going to come out. Um so yeah, but the the problem for me is that I don't think we showed enough of it first twenty. Mm-hmm. I think we were quite passive first five. I think we had one or two good runs forward, but overall it was Rangers dominating possession. And then this is the games have been very similar. Like we can agree that the four games throughout the season have been very similar, in that Rangers have had most of the possession, and then Hibs have either gotten into good positions going forward but then in other points we've gotten the ball from defense so like there's been a turnover um in our defensive third right and we just failed to get the ball forward like there's I been some days but i think it worked quite well from well obviously we'll probably talk about this a little bit but the, the goal from rangers there was a yeah. lot of defenders in your box and then you could get out really quickly mm. Uh, which is which is good, and then you try to hit us on the break. Uh, yeah, which I understand. Yeah. We, it doesn't help when we're not that good at getting the ball forward when we're on the counter. I think that's the problem because, like, whenever we do clear it, it just it it, it just Goldson 
Goldson and Hollander just cleaned like cleaned it up. Like it was, and then when it did find a Hibs player, they were too isolated. It's like our counter attacks weren't coherent. Whereas whenever I noticed, whenever Rangers were doing the same thing, whenever we had a break and then Rangers were in possession, they find their passes right away. It's like they look up, they see the pass, and they go for it. There's no hesitation. With us, it's that wee moment of, what am I doing with the ball? And then that allows your Kamara's, your Davis, you know, can to come, come and press. So, first 20 minutes, that's something I don't think we did that well. Then the offside goal happened. And I think, I don't I just don't know that that whole kind of period of play. I mean, you said the goal had been coming. I disagreed. I, I thought, yeah, I, you did. Yeah. But thought, the reason why I said that was because we, we, were, we were getting into really good areas on the flanks and some pretty decent balls in. And it's always been cleared up. So and I kept probing from that. And the offside goal was like, I was like, it's coming. I literally said to myself, oh, it's coming. Okay. Um, and then the goal came literally 30, 40 seconds after that. So that's why I said that. Because mm-hmm. from, from my case, I could see that we were just getting in really good areas. And of course. And you'd work on that as well. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that, yeah. from, from what I've seen, I could see that it was, it was coming. It's, it's the same frustrations. Like, how many goals do we have to concede? like that where it's like we we can't clear it's uh, clearances have been a problem all season the best example is the game that we should have won against celtic like there is no excuses yeah. for that game against celtic where hanlon just sclaffs it and I did, I did watch that as well yeah yeah like that's been a problem and you can agree that aribo's goal as much as aribo's finish was spectacular it's a case where barisic has put the cross in from the left Marciano uh-huh. has parried it right back in, in, into the box, and then it's either Hanlon or Porteous that tries to clear it, and it goes right to Ken on the right, who then puts it in for uh, Aribo, and it's a goal. But it's like again, it's just a problem of clearing the ball and not knowing what to do in those situations. Like uh, you know, you're looking for a pass. Like it's that's something that's really been a problem this season. Even uh, another one that comes to mind: the game we lost just recently against St. Johnson, where it's Liam Craig. It's a beautiful goal. But it's literally it's Doig gifts it to him, and that's been a problem all season. So I was really, I was really frustrated when that goal went in uh, because of how early it was. Because if we're going to get anything out of the game, we need to make keep it level for as long as possible. You know. Yeah, you said about with the ball coming from Barisic right in the header from uh, Morelos and Marciano. Parry yeah, Marciano it. parries it, and then it comes out to. Um, well, uh, from being a goalkeeper myself. Um, it's quite hard to deal with, especially coming at that pace from Morelos and the ball mm-hmm. heading down for the keeper to do anything. Mm-hmm. Then he's trying to keep it out of his goals, so he needs yeah. to try and get something on it. But yeah, yeah, from that, I don't. I I think it was just the way that the Hibs Hibs defense set up. It was a ball yeah. in from Patterson that it went into Morelos. And oh, it was Patterson. Yeah, Hibs, yeah. 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 Uh, it was Patterson not that put the ball in for a rebound. Not Kenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I I agree with you. I'd be more inclined to put the blame on our defence. Yeah, than I, don't, I, don't, I think it's Martial's it, it fault it looks like... that he's parried that. I think it's the fact that it hasn't been cleared properly. It hasn't been cleared, and I think it's that split setting from when he parries it. Yeah, and then the clearance from who's for like Hanlon. 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 So yeah. it was just that from when he cleared it, it was like, oh yeah, that's as fine. And there's that split second where Rangers went back right on the attack, right out to the wing again. I think and that's it, where the realization um, of it's like, oh. I've named another example from you know the Celtic game where that's been Hanlon again. You know, Hanlon's good at a distribution when he's got time on the ball, but if you press him, he is useless. So mm-hmm. that is um that is just how that went. Anyway, so I actually think our response was very good from from going a goal down. Not just not just the disallowed goal, but then going a goal down. Um, decent chances, the kind of uh, later on in that half. Um, and I know yeah, you know, it was practically where you had your killer chances, if you so to speak. Yes, the the chances that. Because if, if we go into half time, half time to come. Yeah, if we go into half time level, then it's game on. Still, it's it is still game on. Yeah, yeah um, the, the it's not just from, the chances that the shots from this bit and Boyle that went wide, and then the header from Hanlon that went wide as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought the Hanlon one should have been a goal because there was nobody on him. Like when when the when the cross comes in, like there's, <laughs> it was from a corner. There's nobody. 
Um, I mean, the Hamlin one, mate, uh, I would say the Nisbet one was probably more of a clear chance because the Hamlin one, he yeah. did have a couple of... If he had Kamara there with him, he also had Halander. He did well to actually get the shot away, to be fair. Yeah. And the Boyle one was was pretty close. The, the frustrating thing is, like, Boyle and Nisbet, I, I think they were both quite similar in that they could have probably taken another touch. Like, they had space. Um, Boyle, Boyle was... The Boyle shot, which one are you thinking? The one in the first, where it just went wide, yeah, like, like the Nisbet I'm, shot? I think I'm yeah. more thinking Nisbet's one. I think, I, think, I think that's a bit harsh on Boyle. Yeah, I was, I, I'm more. I'm trying to remember. I think it's more with Nisbet, because I, I think he was quite... He was a bit outside the box. And as much as it was a good strike, I think he, he had more space to run into. But um, um, just the two shots, though, a lot of... When I, when I refer to chances, it's like times where Martin Boyle, which was a lot, when Martin Boyle had the ball in the right. Uh, the, by the way, the battle between him and Barisic was really interesting. Um, yeah, I thought Barisic was, at times was a bit too confident when he was staying yeah, up the pitch. He was giving Martin Boyle a lot of space to run into. The problem is that the, I think there was one where Boyle was in the... Uh, sorry, Nisbet was in the middle and he was open in the box and Boyle instead goes for like a weird it's one of those where you don't know if it's a cross or a shot but he goes for it um and there's nobody in that position when Nisbet is you know a bit a bit further behind but in space and then there's another one where Nisbet is on the left and should find Boyle who's in space but doesn't find him so it's, yeah, like I say, it's not just the shots that we had, but it's like the the positions we were getting in. I thought were really good. We were, you know, the the only thing missing was a, a wee bit of killer pass. Um, yeah, just yeah, luck really. So, but no. Um, and then the f- second half, I think I was I was on a call with my pal, uh, another Hibs fan. And we both said at half time, like, we need to carry that into the second half because we can't be sitting back again. And what we did is we sat back again. I don't think we showed anything the second half uh, to start off with. Um, up until, again, at, like the halfway point, like, we only started trying once uh, Once we'd already grown into the half. A bit frustrating, but we were putting it under a wee bit of pressure. And then... And then the the disallowed goal. Should we should we talk about it now? <laughs> I mean, you're missing a goal before it. Oh, the Kent goal the was Kent before goal, it. Aye, sorry. A good finish from. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the hips. Aye. Um, it's just his classic Ryan Kent. Really, he's he's done that so often. He's, yeah, done, he's done a couple so players, skinned times. a few of them, coming from their wing. Yeah, but I think the issue. I don't know what you would think, Kyle, but I think the issue is that when you look at the replay. We're not closing down quick enough, and I think it's Gogic that is. I mean, it's yeah, Gogic got caught on his heels a wee bit, but you got to bear in mind when someone's doing that and coming at that sort of pace, and it is a f- so much you can do. Really decent strike as well. Like, oh, it's a fantastic strike. Nobody's expecting, fantastic nobody's strike. expecting him to hit that, and it's to be Marciano as well from there. Like, it's two, it's two quality goals from us. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's, it's good, good to watch as well, especially like third best team in the country. Yeah. Um, now you can talk about the it. Most <laughs> contentious part of the of the game was the was the disallowed goal from Hibbs. Yeah. Yeah. And the call, the call um, comes in. I've looked uh, at possibly. Yeah. yeah so the call that well. comes in from Hibbs. Um, Porteous goes up. It's saved by McGregor, and then Porteous follows in, but Holanda goes down under. Looks like a challenge from from Porteous. Um, yeah. Allegedly, um, I've seen this replay over a hundred times. Like I've, I've not even, um, and as well, just before there's any assumptions thrown about, it's not that I think that we should have gotten a draw from the game. Uh, I was explaining this to Cal before. It's not, it's not that. It's that it's the frustration that we would have had more time to to get the equaliser. But at the same time, like Rangers were truly deserving of the win before, you know. But it's just it's really frustrating when that that is to me that is one of the poorest refereeing decisions I've seen. Probably that, that's the worst all season, and it might be up there with one of the worst I've seen um, since I've started going to football in general. Like 
from my oh that's yeah kyle's shown me an image to yeah that's what i saw okay let me see that but again it's again like it's like rank it's covering guys. it so you can't really yeah. you, you can't you can't you can't really see there's no this is happening angle. live guys this is happening live. there's no real good yeah. angle but exactly it's so the ref's only got the best angle in the house yeah from my point of view like even if you consider there to be contact i don't think it's enough to warrant a front well, because Porteous is barely stunned. There's there's, Hala- there's, there's, there's there's potential from most angles, right? But again, yeah. from the TV there, angles, are not the greatest angles to see. Yeah, there's an element of doubt, but to me, it's like Porteous is getting ready to jump for the ball. It's two players, obviously, going in for the header. Um, and I think at first you said it was a pull, and that was the the that, big... that was the initial reaction. That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. From Which watching the, thing is, the same day. Yeah, the thing is, um, uh, Porteous is behind Hollander, right? So I was trying to say this before, is that if if Porteous is pulling back on his shirt, Hollander doesn't then fall forward. Like, that's not how physics, you know, works. If there's a backwards force, you don't. So then, it, you know, you could argue it's a push. But I seen, I know the angle's not the best, but... It doesn't um, really look like a push. It looked to me... Angles. It looks to me that Porteous, Porteous basically had his, his arms by his side. I mean, not, not by his side, but he had his arms out, but not out in front of him. Like, out as in he's out. balancing himself to go for a... Yeah. Because he's challenging for a header. And then Hollander goes down. And obviously, you know, it, it comes off McGregor and then Porteous goes in for the rebound. I think, to be if we're being fair in the referee, I think what's happened is, like you say, Kyle, from that angle, Ken and Nisbet are both kind of in the way. So the referee's making a snap judgment. But obviously, from our point of view, like, it's, well, it's whistle, frustrating that a, de- before, a decision... Before McGregor makes the save, which is... Hmm. You know, yeah. It's kind of tough to call. That's all... Yeah, yeah. It's frustrating that a decision that bad has come in a game that was that important in our season, in like the the penultimate few games of the season. When I mean, from our point of view, I mean, you can't really say it's a bad. I mean, you can, but the referee has. Well, obviously, that's from the TV angles. But what what we've seen, yeah, we're not we're not obviously standing the pitch watching it from the referee. He's got like there's a photo that I sent before that referee has has got a clear view of it. Clear view. There's no players obstructing him. So the only yeah. person that can make a judgment is the referee and possibly the linesman. But again, no, I just I don't see. I mean, Porteous isn't like. I mean, I'm trying to look at it again. It's like Porteous is next to him. It's not like he's. I don't know how to describe it. He's like not right behind him in a position where he can push down. He's could, in a position. Could you make an argument though that, like, because the whistle went, that you know possibly some range of players turned off and Porteous was able to score a bit easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that's also a case. But then, shouldn't the referee being? I mean, isn't that doesn't that fall on the referee as well? What do you mean? Obviously, if like. The- if he's blown for a foul, play stops, mate. Well, anyway, I think. Um, yeah, because yeah. I think it makes it tough. I don't know. No, I, I, think, I think it makes it tougher in this case that it wasn't able to be pulled back through VAR because if we did have the AR, it would have been a different scenario, I think. But because the referee did whistle. I think Porteous was able to score much more easier than he would have if the referee didn't. Yeah. I mean, we'll never know, to be honest. We'll never know. No, but it's uh, a first meeting one. Again, again, I think I don't know from if you watched like I don't know how you, what your source of the game, Marcus, but uh, Rangers TV were showing something, and then Clive, you heard Clive like, "Oh, something's happened," like, and then mm. it switched quickly. So from the Rangers TV coverage. You probably didn't see the whole incident. You didn't see much of it. You just saw basically what happened after. Yeah. Uh, I was getting the Rangers TV coverage, so I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think the thing is, like, I don't, I don't want this to come off as I'm, I'm upset because I think that we should have gotten a draw. It's more that a bad decision has come 
at a crucial point in a crucial game for us it's disappointing and it makes it worse when we do actually go on and score five minutes later you know it it, it does it does kind of rub it in a wee bit even if i'm not i'm not here like i don't want to be i'm trying to be objective about it is what i'm saying um and the the goal comes from this bit from boom against cross this is pretty good header yeah beautiful finish um it's it looks like it's a really tough one because it's kind of like a glancing header but i think his run his run he got that yard in front of our defenders yeah it made it easier for him so a good finish really good finish it was, that wee, it was that wee bit of split second decision making that we needed and this bit is like he he's a a really good natural finisher in that yeah 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 when the ball comes to him in the right areas he doesn't need to think about it he just puts it you know he he's a natural finisher in that sense um 100%. so very happy with that <laughs> but at the end of the day it finished yeah i mean 2-1 to rangers yeah end of the day it was uh happy about that from my end to uh, keep some beating run going uh, yeah. against uh one of the one of, one of the one of the tough teams uh in the split so mm. let's get that done out of the way really yeah, and for us as well, like we've gotten our toughest game out of the way. Um, Aberdeen, like I said, still have both field firm to play. We've got two home games in a row, and then a really important game up at Pataudry. So, when do you play them? Sorry, when do you play them? Uh, uh, Aberdeen. May. Let me. Twelfth of May. Oh, no, next week game. Of May. Ah, then. Uh, we play the Glasgow Hibs at Easter Road on the fifteenth. Uh, which is a, is a big game the at the last game of the season. Yes. It's a very good game to watch. Yep. And I actually... Well, I mean, depending on whether or not we have third wrapped up, uh, I'd fancy us to beat them. Just going off of how we usually perform against them at Easter Road. So... Definitely be watching now, then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I would say as well that that, that, that prediction could have been worse. <laughs> for uh, the, the reaction for us both, is, could could be worse. Yeah, what were uh, the analysis of the game? Analysis, yeah, yeah, could be worse. Well, the thing is, we, we, I mean, the this is the first thing the time the listeners are hearing it, but we've talked about it before. Like, you, so know, you talk about it so, for an yeah. hour before we start recording. So. Yeah, we, we, we yeah, but they, they, they don't need to know that. They don't need, they don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay. That's off cam. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Anyway, so that's the end of the uh, games from this weekend. Uh, but next weekend, it's the return of the Scottish Cup. Um, we'll get into those predictions later. We'll uh, recap the predictions from this week. Mm. Yeah, you can do. Uh, so there's a bit of change on the leaderboard. Oh. Disappointing, if, but <laughs> uh, so I'll just go over. We've actually got second, second places and first places, so it's not too mm. bad for us all. Not bad effort, but it's the, quite a big gap between the firsts and the seconds. Oh, is there? So, okay. Yes. Uh, so get your spreadsheet up, Marcus, for this one. Yes, <laughs> I put it up. So. Uh, in tied seconds with two points is Sam and myself. Oh. Mm. Poor effort, Sam, for us both. <laughs> I'll tell you where you got your points first, mate. So you got a point for Dundee United win, nice. and you also, or maybe you didn't. Oh no, you got a, you got a point for the Rangers win as well. I was going to say, like, I forgot you predicted Rangers to win for that one. No. And then <laughs> joint first. Joint joint firsts, obviously, uh, Marcus and Andy. I don't know if Lewis gave any predictions. I don't yeah, think he, he did. did. He put them in the, the chat. Did he? Yeah. Could actually... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, can't I can't remember. remember he did. I can't remember them to put that. But I'll <laughs> get him updated. Sorry, Lewis, but that might change everything now. Um, so, both with five points for yourselves, guys. Mm. Andy and Marcus. Uh, Marcus, you got... One point for the Celtic win. Uh, you got four points for the Dundee United win because you guessed one 0 and it was one 0 mm. uh, that's your five points. 
Nice. And he got his for... He actually got four points for the Rangers game. Uh, and he also got a point for the Celtic Livingston game as well. So, so I'm like Andy for that to guess the Rangers win for that one. So overall, uh, Marcus Sherwood 41. Yeah. Andy's on 39. Yeah. I'm on 38. Sam 27 and Lewis with 15. But again, that could change with Lewis's results. I'll recap then next week when we do the pods. So just remind me. But looking at then, this yeah, week, that... there's been uh, this week coming up. It's Scottish Cup again. Um, some games have been moved around uh, mm-hmm. due to coverage of uh, Prince Philip's funeral. Um, so they've been moved around to accommodate that. But uh, we start with three games on Friday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of which is St. Mimin versus Inverness Kelly Thistle. Mm hmm. Mm. I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one after a full time. Oh, don't do this to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, well... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get a bigger box for my Excel sheet, but it's uh, fine. <laughs> I think uh, I think Cali will do it in penalties. Oh, really? 1-1 one, one full time Cali in penalties. Right. Okay. I'm going to say Cali 2-1. Really? Oh. Right. Okay. I am going to say one nil St. Hmm. I think I don't think Inverness will do much damage, but I think it'll be a tough one for St. Menon to win. I think they put they put three passwords County in the last round. Um That's true, got nothing yeah. to fight for in the championship at the moment. Uh, so I think they're out of playoff. Actually no, they're in fourth in the playoffs. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, fourth in the championship, sorry. Um, but I think they've got they've got a result in them, and uh, they'll get it there. Uh, next up, uh, we've got Motherwell versus uh, Greenock Morton. Two indeed. Three nil Motherwell. Okay, I'll go next person. I'm going to say uh, two nil Motherwell. I'm going to say 3-1 Motherwell. No score. Uh, both of these teams are ninth in their leagues, but uh, Motherwell obviously in the Premiership. I think in the Championship. Um, true, that's true. Uh, um, and another game on Friday night is Forfer versus Dundee United. Oh. Um, United don't Score many. Many. They don't score many, but I think they'll then win. Again, they're playing tenth in League One, so yeah, <clears throat> that's true. I'm going to start this one off. Actually, I'm going to say two 0 United. Um, we we played up at oh yeah, sorry, Sam. I was going to say um, I'm going to go with four <clears throat> one United. Well, really, it is a. A really tough pitch. We played um we played them away in the bet Fred and we really struggled. We actually needed a last minute winner from David Gray in that game. So yeah, I think I think I'm I'm really torn. Between I'm really torn. Uh, I don't know whether full throw a score or not. Alright. Um, Two 0 United. I have to say it. Yeah. It's not gonna be. A, it's not gonna be like a route like three or four 0 But I don't know if four are gonna score. They'll just be really defensively compact, and you know. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Shank Kondal score a penalty. Yes. I don't know. Saturday, eleven forty-five. We've got uh, Kilmarnock versus Montrose. Oof. Mm. Um, I'm gonna say four 0 Kelly. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go one down. I'm gonna say three now, Kelly. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna go with a Kelly win and say three now. Okay. Well. Yeah. I don't see Kelly. I don't see Kelly. Fifth. I think it'll be an easy one for them. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy, but I think they'll still get three. It's going to be one of those games for them, I think. Lafferty will score a couple (laughs) against that Montrose defence, probably, yeah. Um... Um, Saturday evening, we've got a big game. Uh, It's Aberdeen versus Livingston. I forgot about that, actually. I forgot about that one. Hmm. One nil Livingston. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm gonna. S- oh, sorry, you go, you go. You go. Okay. Oh, it's a tough one to call. Actually, I'm actually gonna say an Aberdeen win, right? Only because of Livingston's recent games. They, mm. they're obviously they got beat by Celtic. So they're six now. Uh, so I don't think they'll they'll still think about that. I don't think they'll bounce back from that. Uh, so a hurtful score would be to lose game by. So. I'm going to say uh, 2-1 Aberdeen. Um, I think that obviously Livingston aren't in a good run of form at the moment, but Aberdeen still only win 1-0, so I'm going to say 1-0. Fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. I think if Aberdeen, if Aberdeen properly struggle against like likes of Dumbarton, then um, It'll be one of those where they don't score, and I think Livingston will just take their chance. So, yep. Um, the next game, uh, another evening kickoff on Saturday. It's St Johnston versus Clyde. Ooh. Um, two one St Johnston. I think Clyde will make it really tough. I think Clyde are going to make it so tough that it's going to be a two one win for Clyde. Wow. Who did Clyde put out the last round again? Didn't they put... Uh, wasn't it a championship team? Uh, they put out... Uh, do, 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 air. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they've already proven themselves against a, a team from a higher division. So, uh, I th- yeah, they'll, they'll make it tough. But, I th- yeah, in the end, 2-1 St. Johnson. Um, yeah, I'm going to so you said two one St Johnson Marcus, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say two 0 St Johnson. I don't think Clyde will score. I think St Johnson. It'll be tough for them. I think a goal in each half, but late on. Hmm. So I'm gonna say. Okay. And on Sunday, it's a big game at twelve forty five. Strongwell versus Hibs. It's going to be 3 0 to the cabbage. Why is that? Because they'll be back there, Marcus. Strunrar, or let me just double check their position. They are, at the moment, fifth in League Two. And they've just been beaten off Edinburgh City. So. It's true. Yeah, it's true. So no. The second biggest Edinburgh side can beat them, so can the first biggest. Yeah. Um, I know all the all these cliches about going, like I was saying about four for just a second ago. But yeah, all these cliches about uh, lower league opposition, um, it being tough. I think unless it's Brora, then most of the time you are gonna put them aside. They're a League Two side. Um, well, Stranraer did put out Bro in the last round, so yeah, which is really impressive because Brora. Uh, put out a top four premiership team, according to some. So, yeah, no, nah, I mean, it's come on. I mean, we'll still have too much for Stranraer. Uh, Ross doesn't like to rotate, I've noticed, for the cup games, unless he has to, obviously, but he, he will keep the same squad. Um, and so if you've got the likes of Jackson Irvin, Martin Boyle and Kevin Nisbet and, and Dodge playing against Stranraer, I don't, uh, yeah, I can't see any other result than 3-0 Hibs. Okay. I'd like it to be more, but I'd like it to be more. Like I, I take a five 0 but I don't want to get carried away. So, yeah. What's interesting about this fixture is Hibs versus Stranraer. Um, it's back in twenty thirteen. There was a League Cup tied between these two teams, and it finished five three to Hibs. Um, mm. Not too much. I don't know what to read into that. Um, but that's Stranraer this time, and I'm gonna go with a four 0 Hibs win. I think. No, uh, Ross will put out a, a strong squad who wants yep. to get into the next round. Um, and if we play as well as we did against Queen of the South, then I don't see how we can beat this guy by about four or five. 
So four or five. I'm saying mm. I'm gonna say go with go with four nil there. Go with four. Yeah, I think it'll be an easy performance, a strong performance from Hibs. Um, I don't think they'll put the strongest team. I don't know. Um, yeah, I would like us to rotate one or two. Yeah, like maybe, maybe McGinnis in for Newell because I think McGinn. I'd like to see him get play, uh, get game time. Since yeah, feel bad for him. I'm, I'm don't think it'll be as much as four, but I'm gonna have to agree with Marcus. I think it'll be three now. Mm. And there's the other big game on Sunday um, at three o'clock. Uh, it's the old firm Rangers versus Celtic. Yeah, right. I'll let you two go first, and I kind of want an explanation as of why. Right. Um, I'm going to say. It's tough on a call, my, isn't it? It's a very really tough on a call. My initial thought is two one Rangers, but I think Celtic are probably going to go for it. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll put a cheeky draw. And then I thought, no, because actually I do think Rangers are going to win in full time. And so I'm going to say 3-2 Rangers. Wow, okay. Yep. Okay. I like it, I like. <laughs> I think I'm going to dust off the old 5-5. Five five. Oh, please don't say 5-5. Five five. I'm going to say 5-5. Five five. <laughs> Yeah, I swear you're the only one like that's thrown in five five. I'm the only one that throws it in, and I, that's why I'm second bottom of the predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Fine by me then. But I'm gonna throw out the five five, and I'm gonna say Celtic win on penalties. Wow. I just think it's gonna. Why? Because I think that Celtic... they don't have Rogic. They don't have Rogic, though. So... Celtic have. Oh, they have Rogic. The only thing that Celtic have to fight for this season is the cup. And if they're going to go all out on the cup, so I think they could play their strongest team and they're going to go try and go as hard as possible. And I think Rangers' heads are going to focus more on the league and keeping that unbeaten run in the league. Why? So, no, but you don't get a trophy for an unbeaten run. No, you don't. You, Jared will absolutely be like, you know, we can win a double. The league's yeah, both, wrapped up. Both teams are going to play on strong sides. And I think it's just going to be a free for all. Uh, both teams are going to go for it. Um, I mean, because it's because, uh, because both teams don't want to go out this early as well. So yeah, I think right. I'd, like if, uh, I'd like it if both could go out. Can I predict not gonna, that? It's not really going <laughs> to happen, though. No. I'd really like that. Right, I'm going to be a realist here, right? Because we are realist on the false nineties. Yeah, the no readers. No, <laughs> I'm going to say straight up: any any team can win this, right? Any team can win this game if you have the mentality that's right in the mid if you win the midfield battles win the the 50 50 because most old firms if you win the midfield battle you'll win the game most likely yeah so it's uh, it, again as, as i don't know who said it it's basically going to be a, a free-for-all whoever wants it more will get it and obviously being a rangers fan i'm obviously going to say a rangers win um but I think it will be. I think it will not an easy win, but I think it'll be comfortable. Only because Celtic will fly out because it's the only thing that they've got left. So they'll fly out. They'll leave, they'll they'll leave gaps in the defence for us to pick off. So I'm going to say for that, I'm going to say two 0 Rangers. Confident, confident. Not confident. Again, it could be 2-0 Celtic. It could easily be 2-0 Celtic. It's it's going to be a free-for-all, as, as someone said. But I think Celtic will, will, will fly out the traps from the first whistle. And we need to, if we can get that, if we can master that and win the midfield battles, win the 50-50s, put a couple dirty challenges in early, set their place, uh, I think it'll be a, a comfortable one because they'll leave, they'll leave gaps in the defence if they're flying out. It's gonna be. It's, it's a tough one to call. Um, uh, it's it's so tough. It is so tough because Rangers obviously need this and Celtic need this to make their. Like, if it was in the league, it'd be easier to call. If it's just one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough one. It, it, again, it could, as I said before, it, it could easily be two 0 Celtic, two one Celtic. It could be three 0 Rangers, three one Rangers. It, it, could, it could be five, any five. score. I mean, could be, but I wouldn't agree with your with your penalty um, verdict, but. Yeah, again, uh, I'm going to try and just be as realistic as I can. It's, it could, it could be, it could be any, it could be any result, really. 
but we win this game, I'm getting very drunk. Very, very drunk. <laughs> right, so the quiz. He's ready. I'm ready. Okay, so it's not going to be sort of because we've done before, right? So it's not going to be like a question and answer. So you need to give me the answers. Okay. And you'll get points. So basically, I'm looking for the top 10 most successful Scotland managers. Not like for teams as in the Scotland national team. What is in terms of like... Win rate. Win ratio. And if you can give us the percentage, you might, might even chuck in a wee, a wee free point there for you. Steve Clark? No. No, he's not there. So the thing this is was made before Steve Clark. Oh, okay. Mm. It could also give me the year that they were in charge of as well. Might, might chuck a free wee. Oh, come on, guys. It's got managers. The thing is, like, most of my lifetime, they've been pish. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. So it's not Craig Levine. It's not Bertie Vokes. It's um, not Craig Levine. It's not Alex McLeish. Um... <laughs> Alex Ferguson. Who? Fergie. Because he was Scotland manager. Sorry? I'm not sure. Wait, who did you, you say, sorry? Alex Ferguson. Alex. Alex Ferguson, no. No, okay. Oh, yeah, he's coming right. on. Jockstein? Yep, Jockstein's there. Is he? Yep, do you know what year? Oh, was it the 70s at some point? I'm not going to accept that. <laughs> it was uh, 1965 to 66. Wasn't he managed twice? Huh? Jock Stein. I swear he was managed twice. Could, I could tell you, potentially, yeah. Just going to do a colour coordination so you get it. Mm. But I will give you a sort of hint. You did say one of the managers already. Wait. Is it quite clean? <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> Um, uh, Alex McLeish? Yes, Alex McLeish is there, yes. He's actually oh, the top, really? most successful Scotland manager. No fucking way, really. Yes, win rate of 70%. Do you know what year? Oh, this is, what, first spell? Within yeah, it must be. 2000 and... Oh, like, 2006? Around that you're time, yeah. So close, you're so close. Uh, 2007. 2007, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So close, guys, so close. Um, okay, so Max gets that one. Can you name any more? Can you name any more? Mm. I, I, I could just, I could, I could get this on the next week. You can think of any more, guys. You can start this off next week. Uh, Gordon Strachan. Um, Gordon Strachan is there, yep. Um, what, was um, what was that, what, 13 to Yes, 13 to 13. I'll throw a match. Yes, I know. yes. He's got it. 2013. Do you know what the win rate was? Quite, quite poor, actually. I mean, it's a Scotland manager. Of course, it's going to be quite poor. Um, uh, go on. Give us a give us a give us a 45? Close. Uh, it's 47. 47.06. So, I know this is just a throwaway because my, my knowledge of Scotland managers pre 2000s is pretty poor. Right. I know Willie Ormond, Hibs legend. Manage Scotland, but that's just a throwaway. Like, I really don't know. Yes, he's on there. Okay, do I have to name the years? <laughs> I mean, I mean what you got to lose, mate? Go for it. Oh, 76. That wasn't his time, yeah, but yes, it was 70, oh. 73 to 77. Yeah, was it okay? Yes, Ali McLeod. 78 World Cup. No. No. Just getting your thinking caps on, isn't it, this one? Why? No. Come on, name some other Scott managers. Come on, Are they, I know at least two on here you haven't named. Three, potentially. Craigie um, Brown. Yes, says one. So what, it was like George Burley for a while, but I don't think he'll be. No, he's not on it. No, he's not on it. No, I don't. I really, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> no. 
So you've named, you've guessed the top. You've guessed 6th, 7th, 8th, and 10th. Oof. Hmm. Hmm. I think a lot of these are going to be like pre. Yes, they're quite like... quite old. Yes, but you're still getting one. Uh, who's in our era? Um. Second record. Uh, who else is there? Come on, guys! Come on! Hell. Um. I can get this off the bat. Water Smith. Head for you. Yes, there you go. Walter Smith. Oh, is that it? Oh. Walter Smith, yes. I couldn't tell you. You, know, you started Scott Marge or no? 04. 04, 2004, 2007. I mean, my, the thing is, my my, rec- my recollection of football pretty much only goes back to about 2006. <laughs> Aye, I know what you mean. Yeah, man. I mean, the rest of them, one's 1960s to 65, one's 71 to 72. 66 to 67, and one is 1958. Jeez, oh. I didn't tell you. Right, I'll, t- wait, I'll give you the you basic... 58, 58. Um, shit, um, oh, who was the Man United guy? Because he was Scotland manager for a bit. I think he's right. I think well, he could be right. Me. Yeah, that's it. That's damn it. it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you both a point for that. It's a joint effort. That right. <laughs> did say the name for that. So fifty. Got it without oh. Samson. He was the Man United guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to be joined. That's a good effort oh. for both of you. Jeez, so you can I name any other ones, or is that you? Just giving I points? honestly don't think I could. Unless yeah, you've actually done pretty well. To be fair, you, you're missing three, and okay. it's the the second, third, and fourth. Who were so 1965 win rate of sixty percent was Ian McCall. All right. Huh. Mm-hmm. Is he still Seven... at Park? Couldn't tell you, man. Or I'm thinking right now. Yeah, I mean, no, this is 1665, mate. I think he's dead. No, can't be that old. He's probably what? He managed in the 60s, and he was probably about 40. He'd been in the 70s, bro. He'd been in the 70s. No, he can't be. That's what he managed. Like, he probably is dead, yeah. He's probably is dead. Oh, wait. Right. I'm just looking. All right, Ian McCall, foot Partick, Thistle manager. The Ian McCall. In all right, died in 2008. <laughs> oh. All right, <laughs> okay, and then 71 to 72 was Tommy Doherty. Okay, I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> 66 67, <laughs> winning of my 50% again was um Malky McDonald. Nice, yep. right? Yeah, that concludes the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was pretty shocking, not gonna lie. <laughs> And on that point, um, I think we're going to end it for this week. So uh, thank you two for joining me this week. And uh, I'll see you again next week. See you later, guys. The False Nineties podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, and our website at false90s.wordpress.com. For updates, follow False Nineties on both Twitter and Instagram. And a big thank you to Francisco Alvia and his track Space Game, which is our theme tune. It was after the goal? Before the goal? Before the goal. All right, okay. So the first half. Um, I can't find it, mate. I'm looking at the wrong one, that's why. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Right.